This week on Cartridge Blowers, we talk about a game where you, yes you, can take the role of a filth-munching fly in search of self-discovery and the plan. The ghost of Matt Crua rises from his bloody grave to tell us what he thinks are the top 10 worst video game plot twists of all time. And then it's time to rip out your rapiers and get the Black Death, because we're playing medieval-themed games. Nikki saws off a horse's head and fire emblem. I tell orcs to get in the box and orcs must die too. And Dylan plays a tedium simulator in the guild too. All of this and special guest host Erica Mendez on episode 14 of Cartridge Blowers. I'm punching a guy and I don't know how to stop. YNIN Podcasting, part of the EDOC NameLock Interactive Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to YNIN's Cartridge Blowers, the show where we give video games a second chance to make a first impression. I'm Cody Coleman, head administrator over the EDOC NameLock Interactive Network, and with me, as always, is community administrator of YNIN, as well as an admin over at the Voice Acting Alliance, the wonderful Miss Nikki Wright. Hi! Yep. Also with us, we have Mr. Dylan Frisbee, one of our beloved co-hosts, and and because Matt is dead, having been crushed underneath a falling steamroller, we have replaced him temporarily with uh, one of my fellow Dust and Elysian Tale castmates and uh, voice actress extraordinaire, very talented <laughs> artist, Ms. Erica Mendez. How you doing, Erica? I'm doing good. I can't see anybody right now because I'm stuck on the YouTube app, um, and I've never Google hanged out. Hanged out? <laughs> That's okay. Hung you out. can just click up, click I've on our pictures at the bottom there, and out. and it will replace uh, the at YouTube the app. The bottom. Yes. Crazy, right? Ah, uh, there it is. I found it. Okay. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Yay! Celebratory cool. fireworks. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh, oh my no. God! You're gonna cut your fingers off. Please don't cut things Machete. off or burn down the house or what have you. But uh, yeah, so welcome, Erica. Welcome to uh, to this little show that we do An here. An improvement over Matt, if I do say so myself. Oh. I'm just here to look cute, really. I don't know. Yeah, you got to do that and and bring the funny and and you got to talk a lot. I'll That's, try. I, I'm not good I, at that. I, I don't know if you realize so much was expected of you when you agreed to help us out. <laughs> I wasn't told anything. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> But, uh, all that said, all those introductions, uh, you can also subscribe to us on iTunes, and you can stream us on the website, but probably the best way to actually watch the show when it is uh, all edited and uploaded is via YouTube, because then, if you don't want to listen to us babble on about a certain thing, you can skip to whatever segment you want using links in the description below. Uh, also, we're going live right now. So this is now a live show. Wonderful, fantastic, several... Actually, a lot of you are watching right now. Um, you can watch us every other Friday on average around 10.30 p.m. Central Time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern, West uh, Pacific Time. And, uh, yeah, roll in your eyes. And Cody earned every inch of that of GED that, that he roll. got. Yes. <laughs> and accompanying college degree, uh, but also uh, at 11.30 p.m. on uh, the East. So, that's us. This is what we're doing. And now we go over all the stuff we played in the week. Did you guys play anything extra special? Yes? No? Maybe? No? <laughs> nerd game. What else is Love new? It. <laughs> yeah? Right on. I, I've i just been too busy. I haven't really been playing uh, playing much. Um, in fact, I haven't even played. I was playing Sonic uh, Racing Transformed. Excellent game, by the way. Incredibly hard for a kart racer. Um, and, uh, yeah. Erica, you been playing anything? I've been playing a lot of League of Legends. Like, I think I'm addicted. It's kind of sad. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that's cool. You're the only one of us that I know that actually plays this game. Uh, how much do you like this game? Like, what? explain what it is. Give the elevator pitch of League of Legends. Oh, 
this is why I'm not doing anything with animation right now because I'm terrible at like summarizing and like <laughs> elevator pitch things. Um, but it's basically a you know a MOBA, which is I don't even know what MOBA stands for. I but... don't either. <laughs> Also, funny. excellent, excellent, brightly co- colored gloves. By the way, no. <laughs> cartridge blowers brought to you in Technicolor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right basically, a game where you you have a choice between several different characters, and um, you pick a character. Each character has like you know ranged abilities or melee abilities, and you fight against other people um, on three v three teams or five v five teams, and. It's right when I first played it, it was hard and I didn't like it. Uh, yeah. But I started playing more and I got better. And I'm level thirty now, which is the level cap. And, oh uh, wow! Yeah. So I'm, now there's no more really. There's no more game for you, really. Not really. It's just when I want to kill things, basically, you know, or sometimes well, get nice. my butt kicked. I guess I'm not <laughs> great, but I'm decent. Well, that's that's all one can really ask for. Really? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I guess unless anyone else has something we can talk about for the uh, for what we've played, I say we go ahead and start talking about the news new crap. What do you guys say? Let's do sure. it. Right. Do it, yeah. So before we take a dive into the past, why don't we take a look forward at the top things we're looking forward to in the new crap? All right, so um, not too much to talk about this week. Uh, the next episode will have a lot of awesome stuff to talk about. But for the next two weeks, all we're really getting is uh, on February 10th is probably what's the most interesting and different game that will be coming out, uh, which is called The Plan for the PC and Mac. Um, not a lot has been really put out there, but from what I've been able to glean first, it's going to be free. So you'll be able to download it from Krillbyte's uh, website um, for free on February 10th. Um, it's basically something they used as a side project to help everyone's creative juices get flowing uh, on the thing, but it's it looks beautiful. Um, you play a fly, and it's like a puzzle game? And they're trying a lot of new things with it. Um, they call it a self-discovery video game, whatever the hell that means. Uh, does this sound like anything intriguing for any of you guys? It sounds like a system I would like to look into. Yeah, I would try yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Right on. I, I don't know about how exciting a, a fly protagonist is. Is. You can die so easily. <laughs> you can, In but the game you only have like twenty four hours to complete. That's <laughs> <laughs> twenty four hours to completion or imminent doom. And uh, yeah, it's I'm interested, especially since it's free. Why not download it? You know, it's, what's it gonna do? Cost a couple of gigabytes. What's a gigabyte nowadays? You know, there's thousands of them. All the space I have left on my computer. Well, let's move on to February 12th, shall we? Uh, we have Aliens Col- uh, Colonial Marines for the Xbox 360, PC, and PS3. Uh, it's another delve into the uh, the alien world, the Geiger-styled uh, aliens and whatnot. Um, it's supposed to be an actual sequel to 2 to bridge the sequel or bridge the stories from uh, Aliens 2 to a uh, Alien 3, whatever the third movie was. Um, did you guys like the franchise? Is this something that you might be interested in? Or I've never no? seen the movie, so no. You've never yeah. seen an alien? None of you have seen an alien movie? Oh, no, I've seen uh, the first alien. Yeah. Okay. The well, classic. It's classic. Yeah, uh, Sigourney Weaver and all the other whatever the hell they were supposed to be. Um, but I, I thought the aliens were really uh, interestingly designed. They're designed by a massive pervert. But uh, anyway, then we also get Omerta City of Gangsters, a tactical RPG that takes place uh, in the 1940s with all the gangsters running all over the place. And I don't know. I like tactical RPGs. You guys like games like Final Fantasy Tactics and stuff like that? Does gangster-related ones sound good to you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no? no? No, I didn't really get into the tactics, um, but I hear it's really good. 
Um, then uh, we have on February 19th, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for the Xbox 360. Great title. Cool. Yeah. I know. What the fuck is Revengeance? <laughs> what is a re- Revengeance? I don't know. It's, uh... Vengeance and Revenge. Mixing the word. Revenge. It's the same fucking really thing. <laughs> Just sounds cool. Sounds even more. Have you played the demo? Vengeful. I, I haven't played it yet, but everyone I've um, heard that has played it has said it was really good. And any, like... Um, any doubt they had based on the name uh, was totally blown away. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, uh, stupid name, not necessarily a bad game. Yeah. That's, that's good. What I, that's I what I've heard. That. I might try it, because I've got a PS3 now, so... Um, and then the last thing we have to talk about uh, for the new crap this week is Serious Sam Double D XXL, which... Man, okay, the trailer that's going on right up here is... Uh, it's the most fucking strange goddamn trailer. Serious <laughs> Sam is a traditionally a first person shooter that is just made with tons of enemies. They're just throwing monsters at you all the time and you get all these really fucking weird weapons like a bee gun, a gun that fucking shoots bees. And uh, just that little things awesome. like doesn't it? <laughs> And they've had a really good level editor and stuff like that since there's not a lot of AI. They basically just keep coming at you until you kill all of them. Um, And now, this is going to be a side-scrolling, like, Contra-style game. Only they've added... uh, First of all, you can play a Sam or whatever the redneck is that appears in the trailer. Um, And there's, like, this gun stacking system, because... Apparently they're all about being ridiculous. And you get all these guns and you stack them on top of each other. So you have like a B gun and then also an AK-47 and a flamethrower all stacked on top of each other. It's so like Legos. The... Yeah, okay. it's like gun Legos. Um, <laughs> it's weird, but I'm kind of intrigued. It's going to be an Xbox 360 uh, live arcade title. And uh, so you'll be Xbox able to purchase it and ah. download it. And I can hear me. Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah. We should wanted the link to the stream, so. Right on. Um, that's it for uh, for the, the new crap. Now, normally, this is where we would uh, be playing all the games that, that we played for the week and, and, and making fun of a bunch of crappy games. However, Matt left us with a little something. Uh, I guess he was planning to die. Or something like that. <laughs> but uh, Matt has Matt's top ten, maybe which will be himself. Maybe Good job, Matt. Maybe best decision you ever made, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sn- the slow crap for the slow crap <laughs> the slow clap for Matt Krua. Um But anyway, so here we have uh, Matt's top ten. And we're going to sit down, we're going to watch it for the first time along with you guys. Again, if you're watching live in the comments of the YouTube video or in the YN Interactive sidebar, uh, you'll be able to, to see the link to these things. And uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and watch Matt's Top 10. Hello, I'm Matt, and on today's episode of the... We're going to be talking about plot. Well, any good game worth its salt has some kind of storyline behind it. Even fighting games have storylines somewhere buried within the Hadoukens and electric eel Brazilians. A lot of what people think makes a good plot is not very good at all. You don't always have to have that M. Night Shyamalan gotcha moment. However, a lot of video games think that they need to have the greatest fucking plot twist known to man. Like today, I was eating barbecue, and the barbecue... Oh, my shirt. Right there! The plot twist I can live with. Didn't ruin my day, didn't ruin the story, but it just changed things enough to make me fucking pissed off! Fuck you, barbecue place! Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the top 10 stupidest plot twists in video games. Get ready, because I'm about to count 10 things, proving that I can indeed count to 10.
Okay, let me just get this one out of the way now. I like Metal Gear Solid 2. I like a lot of the games that are on this list, but I really like Metal Gear Solid 2. It's a great game. And while it's here on the top 10 dumbest plot twist list for a reason, that reason isn't that they made you play as Raiden. I like Raiden. However, one of the main signs that a plot twist is shitty is what I like to call the info dump. An info dump is when the story literally just vomits exposition all over your lap and you're left going, why did you vomit on me, story? In the last, oh, half hour or so of MGS2, the game tells you that Raiden's entire life has been a lie. He was kidnapped as a child, trained in virtual reality to be a soldier just like Solid Snake. This entire mission has been manufactured to simulate the first game to make Raiden more like Snake, and the leader of the simulated terrorist is now a real terrorist, who is your adopted dad, who is a clone of Solid Snake, who used to be the President of the United States, but he was just a puppet president who was installed by the Patriots, who were a bunch of dead white men who died a hundred years ago. What the fuck?! Number nine. The Earthworm Jim games are fun enough. Some of the humor was charming, but... Some of it was just random monkey cheese dumb shit. The end of the second game suffers from the latter, and while it's not like the plot of Earthworm Jim matters to anyone except for a handful of really lonely fanfiction writers, it still kinda tosses the entire game out on its ass. At the end of the game, Jim saves the girl, Princess, um, what's her name, and, and stops the villain, Psycho. But everyone is revealed to have been cows the whole time. Ha 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 ha. It's so funny, it's joke, you see. Like, what was I even doing all this for, then? Cows fighting cows? What is this world coming to? I blame Chick-fil-A. Number eight. <coughs> the primary sin of Plot Twist is well on display in the two games tied for number eight. The first is a game I played on this show previously, one of my favorite games of all time, Super Mario Bros. 2. The twist is projected in the opening, but it all comes to a head in the end. The entire adventure through the land of Subcon is revealed to have been a dream. But then, where do the Shy Guys, and Birdo, and the bombs and other elements that come from this game appear in later? How does that happen? I don't... What? Ah! Is everything a dream?! The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening is worse about this. The game ends up being the dream of a shipwrecked Link, presumably the one from Link to the Past, but it's ended that the world that he travels in really existed. So like, did waking up just kill everyone? I don't know. I hate dream endings. Unless Bob Newhart's involved. So you've worked out your numbers, and don't tell me, they added up to number seven, and that's ruled by Neptune. Final Fantasy games have a lot of plot twists, and Final Fantasy IX has a lot of plot twists. But they're all pretty decent. Dagger's actually adopted in a summoner. Got it. Phoebe is a robot. Check. Zidane's pretty much Goku. Done. The problem comes at the very end, something that many video games suffer from, but especially hurts FF9. Zidane and co. find themselves having defeated the evil Kuja, who's, like, e evil Goku, and they're well on their way home, when suddenly they're assaulted by the evil NECRON! Who's NECRON? Man, I don't fucking know, and neither does the player. He just shows up, and now he's the final boss. He's literally never mentioned beforehand, and there's very little reason given as to why you're fighting him other than you have to. Literally, written on this boss are the words, Deus Ex Machina. He's not even an easy final boss, but you beat him, and then you're treated to the ending as if nothing ever happened. But something did! And I still have no idea what the fuck it was! Imagine yourself having fought through the wastelands of post-apocalyptic Washington, D.C. The survivors are all dying, all the water is tainted, but you're right in front of a machine that can purify all that water and give life back to the people. Fallout 3 ends with a terrible choice, in which either you or your female soldier friend must enter the machine, which is full of toxic radiation, and sacrifice your life 
in order to save the people. This wouldn't be a bad ending. It'd be pretty bittersweet, honestly, if not for Fox. Fox is another of your companions. He's this big green guy, shown here. He's literally powered by toxic radiation and completely immune to it. So why can you not send him in? It makes no sense! If he's with you, he just stands there and watches you die! What the hell, man? Luckily, the first piece of DLC would fix this problem, allowing you to continue playing after the ending, but it was just a bizarre twist that the writer seemed to have genuinely overlooked the pointlessness of. Blah! This next game gets a bad rap, and kinda deservingly so. The Mass Effect series is great, don't get me wrong, and Mass Effect 3 is no exception. However, the ending gets shit on by a lot of fans. One of the main draws of the series is that your actions in previous games influence what happens in the later games, and should influence, hopefully, the end of the story, and where your characters go and grow. But Mass Effect 3 ends with the illusion of choice. All your allies just show up and give you a pep talk before the final mission, and you pretty much never see them again. Then, after defeating the threat of the invading Reapers, the big twist comes. You're beamed up to the spaceship and confronted by some kind of... space baby, I guess? <sighs> the baby reveals it's an AI called the Catalyst that created the Reapers to destroy sentient life when it became too evolved, and really, it's just dumb and comes out of nowhere. So Commander Shepard gets to choose any of three endings, which are all functionally similar and dumb and have nothing to do with your previous choices. The twist is the space baby out of nowhere, but the real twist is that all of your previous actions meant nothing and the control of your story was merely an illusion. Fun! I've got more than one head. In fact, yes, I've got four. Ugh, this game is hard. It's really hard. Ghosts and Goblins is a bitch. I've never beaten it. I'm never gonna beat it. And it's not just because it's hard that I haven't made the effort to beat it. It's the twist at the end of the game. This is your princesses in another castle taken to the next level. After beating one of the harder NES games, you defeat Satan. Yeah, literally Satan. And, whoops! Now you have to beat the game again. But, <laughs> This time on hard mode. This time on hard mode! That wasn't hard- That wasn't hard mode?! What?! <sighs> yeah, sorry! Nope, nope, sorry, you didn't actually beat it. You just beat the first half. You just struggled and toiled and bled and sweat to beat half the game. Now beat the other. Or kill yourself. Ghosts and Goblins doesn't care. Either way, you're gonna die. You wanna know about three? Do you really wanna know about three? I know all about three, but I don't think you wanna be knowing nothing about three. The 2009 installment of Bionic Commando was long awaited. Capcom sat on this franchise for so long and nothing came of it, but finally Nathan Rad Spencer was gonna get another adventure. It's not a terrible game, but it's not very good either. Spencer's going after his old partner, Super Joe, yes, he's really named Super Joe, using his newly reobtained bionic arm. Spencer hunts down Joe to find out why he went rogue and maybe solve the mystery of his missing wife. Joe confronts Spencer with the knowledge that his wife wasn't kidnapped and she didn't leave. Nope. See, in order for sweet bionic arms to work correctly, they have to have both a physical and emotional connection with their user. So, I guess someone took Spencer's wife and killed her and made her to a bionic arm somehow. Yeah, yeah, that thing you've been using to do sweet stunts and shoot stuff with is actually your dead ass wife. Suck a dick, Spencer! Woo! If you need a friend, you know what to do. You can count on me, cause I'm the number two. Ugh, this fucking game. It's pretty divisive, but I like it. It's a lot different from other games in the series, but I really just like the aesthetics of Final Fantasy VIII. It's an easy to break game, but there's a lot of fun to be had, even if the game does seem to take itself too seriously throughout. But 
While most people would give this the same problem twist as FF9, what with the game having a final boss that's not really mentioned beforehand too much and also shows up out of nowhere to be the big bad, I didn't hate that so much. They at least attempted to give Ultimecia an explanation. No, my least favorite twist in this game is what I succinctly typed in the original draft of this list as that orphanage shit. See, it turns out that the Guardian Forces, which are your summons in this game, have been slowly eroding the memories of all the people who use them, namely your party, because they live in your brain, and it's the part of your brain that has the memories... Ah, Everyone just suddenly remembers that, whoops, we were actually all orphans together and grew up together, and then Squall travels back in time and creates a predestination paradox that causes the creation of the villainous sorcerer Sedea, and the creation of Squall's seed unit, and really all the problems of the game. Why did any of that happen? Who thought it was a good idea? It was wholly unnecessary and just confused things more in an already confusing plot. Ugh. Ocean series is really cool. I love, 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 love Star Ocean the second story for the original PlayStation. It was a fun, unique RPG with an interesting battle system, some incredible music, and literally millions of things you can do outside of battle. I was hoping for more of the same from Star Ocean 3, and I wasn't too disappointed. It's a lot of fun, and there really is tons to do. In Star Ocean 2, there's this neat twist in that the second disc takes place on an entirely new planet as the world of the first disc gets destroyed. The parallel to that twist in Star Ocean 3 combines a lot of the previous dumb plot twist sins I've already talked about. The dream sequence, everything you know is wrong, the unnecessary confusion, and the reveal that everything you've done to now has been for nothing twists all rolled into one. See, about two-thirds of the way through the game, after your characters fight their way through a quaint, non-advanced civilization, you get info dumped. The world you're on isn't real. In fact, the world your characters are originally from, also not real. In fact, everything, including all the events of the other games in the series, including Star Ocean 4, which wouldn't come out until years later, are all rendered null and void. You see, it turns out that the entire universe is actually just an MMO being played by other people, and the admins are planning to shut it down. So you step out of the video game, like you're in a fucking serial commercial or something, and go to literally murder the admins of the game you're in. Yep, it's a game within a game within a game... Ugh! I, like most others who played up to this twist, pretty much just stopped playing afterward. It was... horrible. And yet, I have to wonder now... Is anything real? Am I just living in some sort of manufactured reality where everyone literally goes through a daily grind while dumpy godlike nerds sit behind their dual monitor setup and laugh? Am I destined to live at the whims of a god who doesn't care? Cody, I've got a surefire way to make sure we get hits. Just see this? this this pony bullshit make that the thumbnail make it the thumbnail people will click on it it'll be crazy i don't give a shit who cares <laughs> <laughs> it's funny cuz it's true that was matt's top 10 we're going to have other shorter ones later on uh in future episodes uh however we we started with the longest and what he assures me is the funniest so it was pretty funny um but matt's gone matt's matt's a dead man so why don't we go ahead and look forward at the games that we're fucking uh, gonna be playing so First up, this week, uh, on our medieval-themed games, where sword and sorceries and villain dragon gasms all over the place. Uh, what? Why me? Because <laughs> you dragons. have a big thing for dragons. <laughs> no, I do not. That is a lie. 
<laughs> Anyone who's watched our show before knows that he's lying right now. Don't anyway, listen to them. Don't listen first to them. up this week, we have Nikki. Nikki, what'd you play? I played Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon for the Nintendo DS. Right um, on. I hear really good things about the Fire Emblem series of games, and so I figured, why not? Because I've never played one. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <I> <laughs> well, why why don't we go ahead and let the game uh, speak for itself, shall we? So, um, when I first played this, uh, or when I first turned it on, the audio was really crackly, and so I usually like to try to show you guys the opening video of the games that I play. Um, yeah. But. Spoiler alert, we're not going to see the whole opening because it was so crackly that I just, I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I It figured sounds that it was, beautiful right now. I, well, I figured it would be crackly, you know, on the actual recording, so I decided to spare everybody's ears, but apparently right the audio sounds really good, so... Yeah, it sounds beautiful. Yeah, which is really disappointing. Well, I guess... Yeah, no, the... YouTube volume down. So, yeah, the uh, the music to this game already strikes me as, as really attractive. Um, no, I thought that, you know, what little I could hear of the music was, you know, really nice. Um, but, like I said, right on. for the most part, was just awful. It's really weird that the recording is good, but it was bad when you were playing it. I find that Yeah, no, I didn't really understand what, what that was about either. But anyway, it asked me if I wanted to have tutorial mode on, and as we've established in previous episodes, tutorials are for pussies. Tutorials so, are the pussiest. <laughs> um, yeah. And right then on. if you notice... The it just keeps text texting starts, over itself. Yeah, over itself. <laughs> what? Um, just kind of button mashing <laughs> to try to get, you know, the text to hurry up. Right on. Story, who cares about the story? This is yeah, all about certainly, prologues. certainly not me. And there's more story coming. Now, this is where I could ask Matt a few things about the game if he hadn't, you know, gotten crushed underneath a steamroller. Um, I was driving a steamroller. Was that him? Oh, shit. Oh, well, fuck. You killed Matt. Basically, suicide. the guard is saying, you need to go to the throne room. Because There's a lot of text in this there. There's so much text. And so, you know, that's why I was saying before the show that I didn't think it was a good pick for uh, a show like what we do. So, okay. Because it's there's a lot of text. Is this a ta also, tactical RPG? It looks like it is. I guess it is. Only without the battles. They're coming. Or there, that's him, Prince Marth. See, this is okay. Way too much text in this game. Of course, I guess it's an RPG. People tend to like, I don't know, stories in RPGs. Yeah, but I also like them to get to the point. Yeah, that's true. The graphics are pretty lame. Did any of you know Fire Emblem was a f series? I guess it had to have been before the DS. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I guess, GameCube. Well, uh, Martha and Roy in Smash Brothers are from Fire Emblem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Everybody used R Marth. And then Marth and Ike in Brawl. So yeah, I guess Melee... Yeah, okay. So... What have you thought of this game so far, Nikki? Oh, by the way, push to talk. Oh. 
Thank you. While I was playing it, I thought, you know, it could be a lot of fun, but also because, you know, I had the mindset of, oh, I'm doing this for the show tonight. I was like, this is not going to be good for the show. It's, uh, it's a little text heavy. Yeah, not, not a shit ton of action. No, um, basically, it's, it's, right now the whole thing is run, like, my goal is to run to the throne and fight things along the way, I guess. And huh. as you can see, I've arrived at the throne, and now, oh no, this- Now you've met Red Skeleman. Exactly. What the fuck is that guy supposed to be? Just a red sol- I guess just a red soldier. Yeah. Which, by the way, the soldiers in these games that aren't you look a lot like uh, the very first boss that you fight in uh, Mega Man X, like during the tutorial nice. stage. Only he doesn't have a giant mech or blaster arm. Seize that throne or go your <laughs> items. Yeah, Check your pockets. I was trying to see if I had like healing potions or something, but I only have weapons. And so basically, the the sister, whatever the hell she is to him, she's like, yeah, our father is totally dead. And so that's basically what this text is saying. What our father? Hold on, gotta check my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> they don't look particularly saddened by the news of uh, their dead father. No, pretty. The text was just, oh no, ellipsis. And then they blinked. Exactly. Prologue 2. Second prologue, which, you know, every story I've ever read has two prologues. Yeah. And at this point, Hey, look, get, you got Greeny. That's good. I get party members. I get a green guy and a purple guy. But man, this is where I thought the game was kind of stupid. Um, yeah. Fire Emblem, fight the rainbow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean you gotta get you gotta get your bearings. So I well, well I think I can move the whole party with just like the leader. Nope. They all go in opposite or they can go in opposite directions from each other if you want. And so I thought that was kinda lame that I have to move each party member. I, I guess I'm just not used to that though. Well, I mean it's it's a normal staple of tactical RPGs. It's your entire party moves single uh, singularly. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, he died. But he still got experience points or something. Oh, no, so... you won. You won. That was Abel on the horse. Did you win? Yeah, that was, that was... I don't think that was me yeah. on the horse. Yeah, no, that yeah, was that's... you. That's your green dude. Now you're fighting Axe dude. Oh. Axe dude did a lot the... of damage, though. See the, the little whole time sprite I'm down like, there? I have an axe. I should be kicking this guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm dying. This is dumb. You were kicking that guy. Wow. All right. You were kicking his butt. I was. Just, you know, I thought I was. Why did you bring your party to attack the guy with an axe if you thought he was your guy? I didn't. Well, no. I, I saw the enemy, and I'm like, I'm gonna go attack the enemy. Oh, more. okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. Though I kind of understand, their sprites are bad. I can't really... doesn't really look like they're on a horse. No, I didn't know he was on a horse. I, I didn't get that at all. I can't really tell what I think they're doing, but uh, I, riding a horse is not it. Yeah. Looks like he has his, like, pike and he's sawing the horse's head off. <laughs> it takes a really long time to decapitate horses in the Fire Emblem universe. It does, though. Fuck. Well, you're sawing, you know. What do you want? That's true. That horse is really just sitting there and taking it too. And everybody's doing it. <laughs> Except like you for Marth. Got, you got confused because Marth fights on the left side of the screen, but the other guys fight on the right side of the screen. Yeah, that's exactly that's... what happened. Okay. I think it depends on which side you attack so, them from. 
right here, my game actually froze, and so I was like, oh, okay, that's a good stopping point as any. <laughs> All right, right on. All right, well, we'll, we'll pause uh, my game for a second. So, Nikki, what did you think of Fire Emblem? Um, I might want to give it a shot outside of the scope of this uh, show, but yeah. it, was, it was okay. It's, uh... I think a tutorial might have helped. <laughs> well, <laughs> probably, yeah. Um, I, I like tac tactical RPGs. I don't know if I'd like them on the DS. It's, uh, I think it's a little bit too small with Maybe if they had graphics. better graphics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, normally I'm not a big stickler on graphics have to be gorgeous to make a good game, but it'd be nice to at least be able to fully understand what's going on. Yeah, I like, I like you know, understanding what the hell I'm doing or what I'm looking at in a game. Right on. Well then, uh, let's move on to the next game, which is mine. Um, I played uh, Orcs Must Die 2, which is actually the newest game I believe ever featured on this show. It's not even six months old yet. Wow. Um, we almost talked about it on the, the July 27th episode of this show, um, but I think Matt decided that was too dumb. Um... But basically, it's a PC game. Uh, I got it for Steam. When I bought this headset, it came with that game. So I figured, eh, why not? Why don't we try a new game for the show? Uh, and with that, um, why don't we just go ahead and get into it? Right on? Okay. Sounds good. Also, guys, don't forget, below, comments you can also watch. Uh, so I thought that guy kind of looked like Gaston, but then I decided, no, I'm going to be the girl. <laughs> girl Gaston. Girl yep. Gaston, I love it. Yep. So uh, this is Orcs Must Die 2. So I have no idea what happened to Orcs Must Die 1, but um, I figured it's not really important for the scope of this game, and it does seem to take place directly after it in terms of story, so I, I skipped that shit. So... Um, this game is essentially a combination of tower defense and, like, brawlers, uh, which is really interesting. I like tower defense games. I like brawlers. It's an interesting combination. It's South Park, um, Let's Go Tower Defense kind of had that element to it, but it was 2D and, and uh, much more guys follow a very distinct path. Uh, this one's a little bit different from that. So here I am trying to get the, uh, the controls down. Um, trying to figure. So I guess this is a floor trap. Let's put that there, and uh, let's not allow them to get past this spot. Why not? And that shoots stuff from the wall, so we'll put that there. And apparently, the horde just sort of waits until I'm ready to hit the select button. And I'm I'm trying to get this set up perfectly. I. I my OCD wants it directly in the line of the other one. So that when people walk through, they, you know, get inundated with whatever the hell that spews out. Now, do you have a limit as to how much you can set up? Yes. Uh, as you can see, I, I didn't finish filling up the floor because I had run out of money. Um, and here comes the, uh, here come the works. And it shoots out acid, so that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. This looks cool. So I'm running around just shooting people with whatever my little staff thingy does. And apparently I can charge it up. And uh, man, does it get more powerful when I charge it up. Are you playing with a controller right now? I am. I have a wired Xbox controller. Uh, mm -hmm. So I plug that in and it works uh, just right out of the box with the, uh, the Xbox controller. So, uh, now that wave is gone, I have apparently just a couple seconds, so I allow my OCD to be fixed with, uh, finish filling out that line. So, every time you kill more, or you make it through a certain wave, you get more points to build yeah, more get, stuff? I guess you get money based on how many guys you killed, or how you killed them, I don't really know how it, it figures it out, but you get more money to build more things. Now, are they after you, or are they trying to get to your base? They're, they're, trying to, they're trying to escape the mine so they can make it to the city and start raiding it. You're trying to stop them from doing that. Uh, oh, okay. If you kind of get in their way, they'll start attacking you. Um, but their main goal is to go destroy the people in the city. 
And, uh... I don't think we're at the... Yeah, there we go. Now we got now we got the bigger orcs, which are a little bit more difficult. And apparently, uh, the other trigger makes them in love with me, so they start attacking the other things. So <laughs> oh, you charm them. For me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was fun. So you can only build in between uh, attacks? Uh, if, if you have money, you can build otherwise. I've skipped ahead here, because uh, most of that was kind of the same. I figured we'd get the final the final uh, set of uh, waves going. This is the final wave. And they're just going to send a lot of works out at me. And I accidentally jump off the cliff. No! <laughs> no! So that wasn't fun. But uh, apparently, I don't really know how you get punished when you die, because I just got respawned down the line from their attack. Um... I didn't get set back any. I don't know. I guess maybe it would have put me just in the middle of the stage, and if people were already at my door, then they would you know, be unattacked trying to make it back through. So, uh... They're getting more and more through my defenses, when that, that kind of sucks. But man, I love watching them just get sprayed and killed with the acid. I... I get some morbid pleasure out of watching the <laughs> skin melt off. You gotta charm some. Yeah, I kept forgetting I could do that. Um, one problem with this game is uh, you are using the the right control stick to emulate the the mouse. So, in some instances, it's a little bit instances it's a little bit more sensitive than you'd like it to be. So there we got my little dance. I've destroyed the final wave. Awesome. Now it's time to move on to level two, bitches. Suck it. Ooh, I'm liking this game so far. Yeah, it's actually uh, it's actually a pretty fun game. I I, I quite enjoy it. So here I am. What are these tunnels? We're in the dwarven mines. Where I work. You're a miner now. Not like I had an in-demand skill set beyond the whole. Kill orcs cast spells thing. Plus, turns out people weren't exactly grateful when I shut off the magic juice. Okay, it's working. How much was this game? Push to talk, bro. For me, it was free. Uh, it came with my headset, so I, I think it's like 20 bucks normally. You can get it on Steam. I believe there's also an Xbox 360 version. I might get it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so apparently they're about to come out of this thing, which I didn't build to defend. Uh, so I had to build something real quick. And there's like no defenses on this side now because I've, I fucked up. I so I cut, I, I cut that part out. I ended up killing them. So now we're, we're at the final wave once more. Uh, I've built down here. Um, so in case they come down the stairs, they just get fucking clobbered. And there's also a new uh, kind of enemy that you'll be seeing in just a minute, uh, called an elemental. And when they explode, multiple ones come out of them. So you have to end up really killing oh like three of them. Yeah, it's it's weird. Yeah, there it is. There's the elemental. They're, 
They're kind of hard. There we go. Now there's two. Now there's two. Though once they they become small, they're kind of easy to kill with like a, a charge shot. That was cool. Yeah, wasn't it? Seeing all those acid acid sprayers come on. Yeah, man. I I can't wait to play this game more and see what other weapon or what other traps I end up getting. Because there were a lot of things in there that um, that I hadn't unlocked yet. Yeah, I love games like this where you can set up your defenses however you want, and just, yeah, man, it's up to your creativity. It's almost like checkers or chess or something. Yeah, a little bit, but with better toys. <laughs> Much better toys. All right, so I finally uh, I killed the last guy, and and that's pretty much it um whoop. crap <laughs> okay cool so uh yeah so that's it that was my game um i thoroughly in the next next thing's planned do you pause it cool mm -hmm. so i thoroughly enjoyed orcs must die too um i never played orcs must die one but it was well reviewed so i'm assuming it was just as good as this one um did you guys think it looked fun is it something that you might play i know dylan liked it erica and nikki seemed like a fun little sort of puzzle fighter type game yeah yeah, yeah. right on um so that's my game now it's time to go into our final game of the evening dylan that's you Yay. Well, I hate to end this show on a bad note, but here's my game. The Guild 2. <laughs> the Guild 2. Okay, the what Guild system two. was it before? I believe just PC. PC? Okay. Um, it is a medieval game. Okay. Um, I try not to go with any fantasy stuff involved. Just okay. try to keep it strictly medieval as best as I can. So okay. this game is sort of like that. Uh, you have a character, you make it, and you start off as um, a commoner and you have to do everything. you got to build yourself up to eventually rule a kingdom, have your dynasty, and then also rule the world and you know, but you start off as a commoner and it's pretty hard. Like It's very detailed to the point where you got to make your name known to businessmen, businessmen who know owners and owners who know the mayor and mayor who knows the, you know, the clergyman. It, it just keeps going up the chain of command. So it's, it's like, micromanagement prints in the popper of the game. Yeah, yeah. And okay. uh, it's very hard to get into. Um, Mid-game, I actually had to quit the game and go to the tutorials and figure out what this game is all about and so yeah. Okay, right on. It's not no. exciting. It's not exciting. <laughs> no, it's very exciting. Keep watching the fucking show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and 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 see what what you got there. Uh, so again, if you're watching us uh, on YouTube, comments has the video code. If you're watching us on Y Interactive, left bar. All right. So uh, let's watch the Guild Two. So here I'm just like in the process of making my character. Um, you pick a religion, and the only one, only religion you get, the only two is Catholic and Presbyterian. Like that. What? Know. Yeah. All right. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is. Um, the classes that you see there are patron, craftsman, rogue, and something else. Where is um, the enemy? I'm armed. It's on pretty dumb. <laughs> it already so, looks like we just way too much shit to have to yeah, take care of. It is. Like, it is just from the the starting screen. Yes. So here to just start you off. There you go. Have fun. Also, it moves like in Diablo. Yeah. Um. Right. The, I couldn't get the camera at all until I went to the tutorials. So. You see me playing around with it. I'm like, ooh, money. And I try to click that. And what I accidentally did was click the person and start beating them up. <laughs> <laughs> also, money is fucking huge in this game. 
<laughs> this world, there are just really giant golden cylinders, and that's yes. your, your currency. <laughs> so here I'm. Um, a long time to beat up. Well, I'm punching this guy, and I don't know how to stop. <laughs> um, I'm like I just got into game. I'm like looking at things. Anyways, I skip ahead. I stop recording because it went pretty bad. Um, here I'm looking at. Need a at, tutorial to learn to stop punching. Yeah. Um, you're building things. You can upgrade your building. You start off with just like a hut, and then as you become more known, you're entitled to build a house, and then your house can turn into a manor, and then eventually. Your own little palace, and then, and then you rule the, your town, and then you go. Oh, from hey! There. Um, we lost Ambi, but we got Kay in the chat room, by the way. Hooray! Um, in your left box, the left side, where all those little like question marks are and stuff, that's basically what tells you what's going on in the world around you. Um, th this is done in real time, so even when it's not on, you're not playing. Oh, wow. It's still going. It's still going. Um, and there are political meetings that you gotta, that you make appointments for that you gotta attend, and you gotta sit in on these meetings and vote things, and they'll go on without you. Um, <laughs> they kind, you know, it's stupid. It's like I. It's have an interesting concept, but you have to make time to go what to a game to do incredibly boring things. Yeah, what did you say? Oh yeah, you could type you could type whatever you want to say to people and they may get you may get a response. And I said there was a priest I was talking to, a preacher, and I'm like, Good day, praise the gummy bear lord. <laughs> I read Gunray Bear Lord, which is possibly more funny, but Gummy Bear is good too. Um here you could I'm buying a title, which is how you kind of you know, I'm no longer a commoner. I'm now a citizen. Um, it tells wow. you what you could do in court. At least and, you became a citizen relatively quickly. Yeah, but it costs money. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm a citizen, I can buy, I can build a house and not live in a hut. Um, these people, these like council members, you have factions with each and individual person in the game, and you got to build that up in order to have their support and that's how eventually they vote you into office into power eventually you that's how you get in the powerful situations is by dealing with people do you like the tedium of everyday life do you want yeah. to go to political gatherings so you can become the lord well we have the game for you yeah we don't cut out any of the boring shit in life so you can no, go it's to game. horrible and like they kicked me out, but they let me watch, I guess, spectate the meeting. And there's no one at the table. There's just one guy and three women sitting on a bench. And I don't know what's going on. Why can't they sit on the chairs? That is sexist. Yeah, right? You're not watching a meeting. You're watching someone's psychosis play out. It is like real life medieval times and the only difference is that you go through all the tedious actions of what real life would bring you yes. but with no reward <laughs> <laughs> now, now empty chairs let us debate how yes. shall we spend all of our road funds what's that invest in chickens yeah uh, so here I'm upgrading my so, house and what it has. Um, people could rob your house, and so you want to build up your house did too. Did you rob houses? I never figured out how. It was oh, so. Oh, that's stupid. This town is so crazy, and I just I was lost the entire time. Um, I don't know if I bring up my map or not, but the map doesn't help you at all. So since they, they really want you to get what it feels like to live and grow to be king in from from like the dirt poor in yeah. medieval life, uh, how in depth do they go? Do you have to shit outside? Do you? Uh... I don't know. I probably <laughs> had to shit for five hours. I never did. Um, you could die, and then your game would be over. Or um, if you, if I think if your character dies, I, I didn't get this far by Reddit. Um, you can 
pass on your land and earnings to someone else, to descendants or something, to keep your name alive. Yeah, really? it's yeah. You can marry people, have kids. It's. Ugh. I guess the man. I guess I could, to some some extent, uh, enjoy the attention to detail. I can respect it. Yeah, the, the, gran- the granular controls. You get a job. Of- yeah, you get jobs, but you don't just get jobs like games are like here. We have a job opening. Take it. No, you actually have to apply, and then you they're at the bottom too. <laughs> but other people apply for them, and you gotta interview against them, and you gotta get people on your side to give you the job. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hang out. There's, today. I gotta go play my game to apply for a job. Yeah, that I hate. It, it, I gotta leave work to go play work. <laughs> I didn't fucking get that blacksmith job. Fucking <laughs> blacksmith. There's application fees you gotta meet for your interview, and what? then yes, <laughs> and it's like how I don't even know this, this place. Is the stupidest shit. <laughs> for fame and honor. Oh, it's so dumb. It's not even a game. It crosses that line. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like taxes. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, every They're April you have to log back in so that you can pay. Tamagotchis from you know, the mid nineties. So I'm back in the courtroom because that's where apparently I'm going to live for the rest of my life. I go there to apply for the jobs, and there's two job openings. One is a Executioner, which gives you control over the dungeon guards, which I thought I could have fun with. Um, and then the, what other... the application process for Executioner entails. Have How you much do you like experience? Do you wear hoods? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, after that, I was like, all right, this is a good time to stop, I guess. Yeah. Uh... Because I had to wait for the job interview time to finally come and it no, no despite sorry. the facts like it were real life or what's that was the passage of time was it really similar to like real life or no no it it went a little faster um but still you had appointments to keep and they wouldn't let you know when those appointments were coming up so you had to watch the clock oh my all the God. time Jeez. and all of a sudden the dumbest shit you would have appointments and stuff, and there you'd see like news banners and um, voting for this new rule, and that actually would impact your world if certain laws passed. And if you you got to make sure that the law is going to hinder you, that you don't let it pass. And so, in order, just your vote doesn't just count as like no, no, your vote is just one vote. So you got to talk to people about it, get them on your side. It's not a game. No, it's not a game. It's, it's not a game. It's the tedium of life. This yeah. Is... <laughs> yeah. Man, what if you didn't get the job of executioner? You get like, ex- what? Execu- <laughs> executed. That's the word. Jeez. Yeah. You could, you could get executioner Yeah. <laughs> Executioner's executive assistant. All right, guys. So, uh, that game was bullshit. Um, yeah. It wasn't a game. It crappy wasn't game, game award for this week goes to Dylan because he had to basically live the most boring parts of life <laughs> over and over again. Um, right on. Does anyone disagree with? Uh, no. With the no. Yeah. I no. Don't. Yeah. All right, guys. It was so, basically a summary of my last two years of life. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have a, a flint and a sword now. Yes, many of them. So moving on up. All right, so that's uh, that's. Hands off. And then he can recreate Star Wars. It'll be great. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was the last uh, game for this week. And uh, before we actually call it a night, though, we got to randomly generate what we're playing next week. So this is normally when I turn to Matt, but I don't got a Matt here. So uh, let's do this. It looks like we... All right, it's actually from a lost episode 
of uh, Cartridge Blowers, an episode that never aired. The theme has come back up. We're going to, in episode 15, play the last games ever released for a system. Dun, 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 dun. That could be bad. For, yeah, I get to play my re- racist religion game. <laughs> well, there you go. So, uh, so there we go. Next week, two weeks from now, tune in and you can see us play really terrible games that were released for consoles. And or live the game. Nails. Or live the game. Yes. What is... I don't know. Anyway, until next week, I'm Cody Coleman. With me, as always, is Nikki Wright, Dylan Frisbee, Matt's dead, so our special guest host was Erica Mendez! Yay! Yay! Erica! Until next time, don't die. And Dylan? Keep on blowing. That's a cartridge there. See, <laughs> blow cartridges. Sick bastards. <laughs> See you guys in two weeks. 